All right, guys, our work with equivalent fractions is going to continue today here in Module 5, Lesson 23. And um, we're basically going to continue the same work that we've been doing um, using a variety of different strategies. Today, we're going to use a number line, um, but I'm also going to show you that trick where you can uh, multiply a numerator and a denominator by the same, uh, both by the same number and create an uh, equivalent fraction that way as well. So, uh, and I'll also show you how that works uh, when you do that, how you can find where it goes on a number line as well. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the problem set and uh, mark up a number line um, uh, with two different colors um, and, and each color representing a different fractional unit. So we have uh, from zero to three here on a number line and it says on the number line above use a red colored pencil. I'm going to use a, I'm gonna use a marker um, to label uh, with fourths. Right? And then it says label each fraction on the number line. So uh, as you know, when I do fourths, I always divide a whole in half and then take each half and divide that in half. So I have zero fourths, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, and one equals four fourths. But then I need to do that same process again on the number uh, from one to two. So split one, between one and two, I find the halfway mark, and then I take each of the two halves that remain and split them in half. We have five fourths, six fourths, seven fourths, and eight fourths. And I can check eight fourths to make sure it's accurate. I like to multiply my whole number here, two, by my denominator four and make sure that I have eight, which I do. And then I take between two and three, again, that's one whole unit. So we're gonna split that into four parts and go nine fourths, 10 fourths, 11 fourths, and 12 fourths, okay? And 12 fourths, three times four is 12, so I know that I did it correctly. And so then I've done, I'm done with number one. I go on to number two and it says, use the same number line and use a blue colored pencil, marker again in my case, uh, and we're gonna mark it into eights and label each on the, on the number line. So um, I know that eight is two times four, so it means every unit I have here, I need to split into two parts. So I need to divide each one in half. So there, and then I'm not gonna, I guess I can put a, a blue there. I'll put on the bottom half. And so I'm just gonna continue splitting each, each fourth into two parts. And now I need to go label it. I'm gonna label this one in pencil, just because I think if I use marker, it's gonna they're gonna get too close to each other and too messy. So I have zero eights, one eighth, two eights, three eights, four eights, five eights, six eights, seven eights, and one equals eight eights. I go to my next one: nine eights, ten eights, eleven eights, twelve eights. 13 eighths, 14 eighths, 15 eighths, and 16 eighths, 17 eighths, 18 eighths, 19 eighths, 20 eighths. It's a little uh, tedious to listen to, I'm sure, uh, but it's important to be able to do 21 eighths, 22 eighths, 23 eighths, and 24 eighths, right? And so I can, again, double check my whole numbers. One times eight is eight, two times eight is 16, and three times eight is 24. So I know that they lined up properly, right? So now I need to list the fractions that have the same, that occupy the same spot on this number line. So I'm just gonna go through it, circle them. So zero eights and zero fourths. I, I could say zero eights equals zero fourths. One fourth and one eighth. That's where I have like any spot I have the red mark and the blue mark together. That's um, those are sharing the same spot. So one fourth and two eighths, two fourths and four eighths, three fourths and six eighths. And I'm just going to keep keep on circling here. Any points that share the same spot on the number line. It turned out to basically be any uh, even numerator in the eights matched up with one of the fourths. Um, so I, again, I 
the question asked me to list all of them. I'm going to show you how you can double check one of them. So seven fourths, for example. And I could say, okay, if I multiply each side by two, top and bottom equals, because that's like multiplying by one. And when we multiply by one, we don't change the actual value. So seven times two is 14, four times two is eight. So does 14 eighths line up with seven fourths? Seven fourths, 14 eighths. Yes, it does. It worked out on my number line. So that's a way you can go through and double check them as well. Um, let's move on to the next part. So it's using your number line to help what red fractions and what blue fraction would be equal to seven halves. Draw the part of the number line that would include these fractions below and label it. So the first thing I need to do is say, is seven halves like between zero and one, between one and two, between two and three, or more than three? So I'm gonna actually draw a picture here and I'm gonna find out. So one half, two halves, three halves, four halves, five halves, six halves, seven halves. Ooh, that's three holes and another half. So I need to go back up to my number line and extend it. I'm actually gonna erase that line for a moment. So we're gonna call this four. And between three and four, the halfway point is right there. All right, so that's seven halves. So I need to figure out what fourth and what eighth would equal seven halves. The way I'm going to do it, and I'm going to say um, seven halves equals some number of fourths. Oh, you can't, sorry, you can't see my writing there. Seven half equals some number of fourths. And I'm gonna to think to myself, how do I get from two to four? I multiply by two. If I multiply by two in the bottom, I also have to multiply by two on the top. So if I multiply two times two is four, seven times two is 14. So 14 fourths equals seven halves. And I can do that same process with seven halves equals some number of eights, because I know that I'm working in eights on my number line. And how do I get from two to eight with multiplication? Well, I must multiply by four. And if I do it to the bottom, I have to do it to the top. So right, seven times four is 28. So I could go back up to my number line and say, seven halves is the same as 28 eighths or 14 fourths. So those are all equivalent fractions as well. And again, you could have continued the process of you know, labeling all of them up to there, but um, this trick that we've learned, this uh, strategy of multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same number to generate uh, equivalent fractions is really helpful as well. On the back here, it says, write two different fractions using the dot on your number line. You may use halves, thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths, eighths, uh, use a fraction strip if, it's, if it helps you. I'm going to skip the first one since the marker sort of came through from the front side. And we'll start with the second one. So this is between 0 and 1. So I know my fraction is going to have a numerator that's greater than the denominator. I mean, I'm small. I'm sorry. Numerator smaller than the denominator. And um, it's one. there's 1, 2, 3, 4, four spaces there. So I'm going to say it's 2 fourths. That's one way to think of it. But I also could think of this as one half because if I drew a line there, this is one half and that's one half, right? Two fourths equals one half. The next one I have one fourth equals some other fraction. Well, what if I did what we did on the front and I split each, each fourth into two parts? So I have one fourth, or I have one, two, two eighths. I can check that they're eighths because I can count the spaces in this, uh, on this number line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now from there to there, that takes up two out of the eight spaces on the number line. So two eighths. And the last one has one, two, three, four, five. But we notice we start at one and we go to two. So we're working in fifths. Two holes times five in the denominator gives me 10 in the numerator. So 10 fifths is equal to two holes. 
I could, again, I could split these in, in each and half. That strategy works well. And if I take five parts and um, take each part and double it, I'm gonna end up with 10 holes. And two, my whole number times 10, my denominator gives me a numerator of 20. And both of those things equal two. So 10 fifths or 20 tenths, both equal two holes. Put 20, 20 tenths down there too. The last problem, we're moving into word problems using the strategies we've learned today. It says Cameron and Terrence uh, plan to run the city race on Saturday. Cameron has decided that he will divide his race into three equal parts and stop to rest after running two of them. Terrence divides his race into six equal parts and will stop running after two of them. Will the boys rest at the same spot on the race? Why or why not? Draw a number line to explain your answer. So you can draw a number line here, zero to one, right? The starting line and the ending, finish. And Cameron, is splitting his race into three parts. So he's gonna run the first part, he's gonna run the second part, and then he's gonna rest. Cameron is gonna rest right there before he goes and runs the third part. But Terrence is going to uh, split his race into six equal parts. So I'm gonna do that in red. I'm gonna, uh, there and there, because those are thirds, and I split each third in half. So I've made six spots for, six parts for Terrence. One, two, three, four, five, six, but he's also gonna stop after two parts. So one, two, he stops right there. That's where Terrence stops. So we can see pretty clearly here that two, six, Terrence, this is two, six, is less than two thirds because Terrence will stop, cover less distance before he stops. If he goes two out of six, um, sections before he stops that's uh he's gone not as far as cameron who's gone two out of three sections and uh, that's just another way to look at um comparing fractions that are not equivalent even though they have the same numerator the denominators being different means um, that they are not the same if they don't fall in the same spot on the number line another way to do that problem would have been to do the strategy where we draw two number lines together zero and one on both and you could have compared that to that, right? So we could have done that strategy as well if you prefer to have them on separate number lines, but you just have to make sure that you have those number lines being the same size and sort of lined up over each other properly uh, to ensure that you are comparing um, things accurately. All right, guys, uh, good job today and uh, keep on working on these fractions. Like I keep saying, I know they're tricky. I know that this is something new, uh, even though we've been working on it for like a month. Uh, there's still a lot that we're, we're learning and there's still a lot of new material. So uh, keep asking questions and keep working really hard.